Okay. Hi. So, we're doing a, um, an orzo pasta salad. Orzo is a tiny little, tiny little uh, piece of pasta. It looks like rice. You kind of treat it a lot like rice, except you don't steam it. And so uh, this, this little guy, Let's see if you can see it. The little guy, that's a little guy. So what we do is it cooks for, says uh, it's backwards for me. So nine to 10 minutes, nine to 10 minutes. So we could it, cook it for like seven, eight, Anyway, so um, I'm already done some shallots and a little test shoot here. Um, and the ingredients we're going to put in it today are uh, artichoke hearts, because the wife loves it. We're going to cut up some olives. We have shallots, and I'm probably going to bring in some of uh, these little orange cherry tomatoes. Grape tomatoes? Grape cherry. I'm not really a tomato guy, I just eat them. Um, because I think these guys are too big and I have um, a giant freaking bowl of them. So, uh, then we finish it off, salt, pepper, um, olive oil, uh, and uh, feta cheese. So, which I already have crumbled, sitting in the fridge, but I don't even have water on yet, so this is gonna be a multi-part sort of thing. Um, let me get some of my cute little panda bowls. Very cute little panda bowls. Panda on the inside. Panda on the other side. Hi, panda. <clears throat> so, great. So, I'm gonna take this, I'm just gonna put the uh, shallots into the, uh, one of the panda bowls. So we can keep the cutting board clear and uh, do some more Two camera filming. <laughs> I feel like a professional, except I'm not. I'm an amateur. Um, so, taking things out of oily baths, like uh, artichoke hearts, um, I'm an Asian food freak, so I have chopsticks everywhere. Um, these are actually from Crazy Rockin' Sushi in Glendale. Uh, we've been getting that delivery during the pandemic. It's Surprisingly good, uh, not as good as Chiba, where we usually go, but um, their chopsticks are fantastic. <laughs> um, you know, I still have packages of them, but I've um, we open them and just keep washing them and, and, and reusing them because, you know, why wouldn't you? Um, so I've got about half a box of this Orzo stuff left. Um, I made this uh, last week, much to everyone's delight. It makes a really quick snack when you're, you know, going through the fridge and you think, there's nothing to eat in here. And then you see this big, bowl of uh, orzo pasta salad and you think, okay, I can eat that. It's at least somewhat healthy. Um, I can't think of what's unhealthy in it. Uh, feta cheese if you're a vegan, uh, that's still not a health concern, but there you go. So lots of good stuff. Uh, little fat bombs, we call these little fat bombs, uh, but they're good fat, right? I mean, that's what they say. <laughs> Look at that. Open oh, just got oil everywhere. Um, okay, so I'm going to grab my chopsticks. Chopsticks. And I'm going to. Well, how many I'm going to use? I think uh, that's a six, seven, eight. So I've decided in any of the cooking videos I do from now on. I'm not really giving recipes. This isn't about recipes. This is about assembling flavors and ideas. Um, I suppose I could write it down, but I cook things differently every time. I'm a, not an Alton Brown kind of guy. Same hairline, uh, but um, I don't do the methodical thing. Um, I believe cooking is very much about finding the taste that you want and uh, going from there. Um, if you know what taste you're looking for, then you know sort of where to go. Um, those aren't my dogs. Those are just random. They're my dogs. Um, okay, so we're just gonna cut these into quarters. And then I do a little... Uh... Now this may be some 
terrible way to do this, but I kind of want them small because the orzo is so small and the grape tomatoes are going to be cut in probably halves or quarters. Uh, and then of course the olives are olive sized. So um, I'm just going to cut these into nice little quarters. Um, this is probably not the ideal knife work. Um, I did drop out of cooking school uh, because I realized it was going to be a lot of work to sit in the kitchen for 16 hours, stand in a kitchen. Yeah, if it was sitting, I'd probably do it because I got into visual effects and I ended up sitting for 20 hours a day. So I can't really say that was a better choice. But here we are. I wasn't thinking I was gonna do my face. I didn't trim up my beard. I didn't do anything. Um, I don't have any eyeliner on. Oh wait, we don't do that anymore. Um, so we're gonna take the other bowl and then we're just gonna dump these in there. So just to get the oils off this, um, you're gonna see if I switch it to the other, if I switch it to the other view of the other camera. We've got this little sticky mat on here. I just use regular cutting boards, but I got so tired of them slipping um, all the time, all the time, slipping, slipping, slipping. Got this stuff that keeps it from slipping. So when you press down on the cutting board, it doesn't go flying across the room, which is what they do uh, when you're not nice to them. So we're opening the olives. Uh, we are draining the olives. Just hand over the top, pour out the juice. So these are just, I'm actually just gonna make little circles out of these. I thought about doing, you know, you know, one of these uh, quarter tops. Oh, you know what I'm doing? Okay, I have an idea. So let's go through these just in the thirds. And then we're going to, um, I could go over knife stuff, um, interestingly. Um, things I learned in school. Uh, when you're doing your knife work, you want to not have dog hairs on your hands. You want to uh, put the knife against your fingers because that way you can't chop them down. You also want to keep your thumb behind things. So your thumb's back here. If your thumb's on the side, you're gonna do what I did and how I got this wonderful scar. Um, that was one of those big Chinese cleavers I went right through my finger with. So, here in this very kitchen. I don't recommend it. It's really painful. So, I'm just gonna do this. Take too long doing it. There's gonna be a cut in here. Try to always hold your knife the same way each time. Hold your knife like this. Grab the blade. Uh, the, the tang, that's not the blade, this is, yeah, top of the blade, most control. Um, I always use a chef's knife for almost everything. Uh, there are different kinds, there's santuku, which is sort of like this ridged thing, but the shape is actually different. It's a straight edge versus the more curved edge. Uh, I have the, the big boy is a, my 10 inch chef's knife that went through the dishwasher and melted. Um, I've had that since cooking school. <clears throat> that was the first thing I bought. It's like, go out, buy a chef's knife. Okay, 10 inch chef's knife, no problem. It's like carrying a goddamn sword on the campus. Um, so it's, it's cool, it's cool. Um, less attractive bowl to put this in. Uh, let's go with a tiny little white guy. I came from some neighbor. I don't even know who to give it back to. I'd love to, I hate this bowl. It looks like our other bowls, but it's not the same size at all. And it's flimsier. Maybe it'll break. Maybe we'll get lucky and it'll break. Okay. Here yeah, I know. Clear off the board. And uh, I think we're gonna... I brought this handy little thing, which is my all-purpose strainer for small things. Uh, I use it in ramen, I use it for uh, orzo. So I'm going to give these a rinse. So back over here. And then uh, we're just going to pluck the uh, stuff off, put it into the garbage bowl. Garbage bowl. Anecdotally, I don't know, what's an anecdote for uh, tomatoes? 
Uh, I think I mentioned in my bruschetta video, which um, no one has seen but me, I don't care for the texture of tomatoes or most fruit, so I need to pair it with, if it's in something that's cooked, it's fine, but I will not put one of these in my mouth because my face will turn into a weird puckery uh, expression of pain for no particular reason. Um, I steeled my knives before, uh, before I started shooting this, so uh, yeah, so tomatoes. Um, I'm just going to quarter these up and we're going to throw it all in uh, together with the orzo. Uh, um, yeah, so these are kind of the simple ingredients. I'm going to put some water on after I get done doing these. I'm just letting the camera roll and I'm going to gab so I can get used to talking on camera because I'm not used to talking on camera. I talk to myself all the time. I used to talk to myself as if there was a camera in the room. So sometimes I would be doing something, I'd be arguing with somebody, and I would turn to the imaginary camera and just give it a look. Why? Too many sitcoms as a child? I think. It's like, what if real life was like this? What if there was a... <laughs> just stab myself. <laughs> This turns into a horror film. And call Jason Blum up. Hey Jason. So I want to do cooking videos. Yeah, okay, that sounds not like our thing. But I cut myself. <laughs> like, because you're depressed? No, because I'm incompetent. Um, where's the horror aspect? I don't know. <laughs> but there's blood. Okay. Those are in the can. Uh, well, they're not. They're fresh. They're from the garden. Um, they're in the bowl. So I'm going to do another bowl. So these are the better bowls. So this is the better bowl. So let me show you the difference. This is the crappy bowl. This is the better bowl. Nice BV. Thompson. Made in China. <laughs> I was going to turn this one upside down. There'll be a lot of olives all over the place. Um, yeah, anyway, so um, right in front of the camera. Let's do it on the other side. Here we go. Um, nobody saw that. So we're doing this. We're doing this. This is fun. This is the best part about cooking. It's just getting everything ready because at the end of the day, it's all just going to be in one bowl comes together. <laughs> Super easy. Um, so we're out of place. Yeah. Well, look at that. Sexy ring light. Tomatoes. Everybody loves that. Ain't nothing a ring light can't solve. So, got this. Gonna put some water on. I'm gonna cut, and then we're gonna come back when the water is boiling and I have another eight minutes to. Okay, I'll wait till <laughs> pasta's in. I don't know. Well, we'll see. Okay, we're back. So, feta. Not a ton, already crumbled. Uh, it was 99 cents uh, an ounce. 99 cents an ounce, uh, looking at the little calculation on the on the sticker at the store, which I thought was the cheapest they had there. So um, we have feta. Now I'm doing, uh, I'm boiling some water. It's already uh, getting a little boiling. I don't have a camera on it. So if anyone can help me figure out the stupid tripod, I could probably tilt the camera down on it. But for now, um, I'm doing salt. I'm doing like uh, a couple of pinches of salt into the water. Um, this mostly helps flavor the water and by doing that you're flavoring also the pasta. A lot of instances where you're cooking long noodles, which I'm going to do um, once I figure out the stovetop camera or maybe I just repurpose the cutting board camera, um, I will uh, do something smart. I'll show you how to make a pasta. Um, at least the way that I do it that I've picked up over the years. So, um, for now, coffee. Shameless plug. <clears throat> so, we have our ingredients. We have, uh, we have some shallots. We have some uh, olives. Uh, we have our uh, artichoke hearts. We have our tomatoes. We have our feta cheese. Does that even fit? Yeah, yeah, it works. Uh, feta cheese. Um, and she, my wife, who interrupted the last video, terrible, she suggested that we use some jarred garlic. Um, Christopher Ranch up in 
Bay Area, Monterey County. Um, I don't love jarred garlic for its flavor. Um, I think fresh garlic is much better. So, just gonna, just gonna set that over there. I'm gonna grab a little garlic. Do it my own. Just making a mess here. Got a garbage bowl right there. Unlined garbage bowl. So it's great to have. Uh, thanks. Uh, what's her face? Um, Rachel. Rachel? Rachel Ray. Rachel Ray, which is how I got this fat in the first place, uh, kind of got me into cooking in the early days with the Food Network. Um, yeah, coming to a boil. So this whole thing's coming together. Um, so what I'm gonna do is we're going to, uh, this is my standard, standard issue. Uh, take the tops off, because they're too crunchy. down into the garbage bowl use the knife if you have to they're not scoops but uh, I don't want to get real fancy here because I do have like a pasta thingy that a lot of people use uh, so he's a little uh, he's a little moldy and a little brownie so uh, garbage bowl luckily there's no third camera to see that that went into the sink and not the garbage bowl so you run the garbage disposal and the whole kitchen smells like fresh garlic. Fresh moldy garlic. Fresh moldy brown garlic. I'm not judging, I'm just saying. Fresh moldy brown garlic. Um, so our water is boiling away over here. Um, I could, uh, I'm not even gonna try and I'm just gonna sit here and fiddle with garlic. While the world burns, I will fiddle with garlic. <laughs> well, the orzo, again, barilla, uh, salted water, full boil, I'm turning it down a bit, just showing you half my face, I'm turning it down a bit, and I'm gonna put the rest of the box in. This could be dangerous because they do expand uh, two or three times, so. Well, it seems like this much at the bottom of a bubbling cauldron of water actually turns into like this much. <clears throat> Keeping it PG without any window. So we're just going to very finely chop this garlic. So I'm going to kind of go to town on it. I'll do little slices. Here, I'll give you, give you a better look. Um, do little slices like this. Uh, take out any of the, uh, the, 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 the skin stuff. Uh, get it all down, and then we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do this. This is the rocking motion, and this is how you just get through stuff and make it really fine. I mean, you can just like, bah, 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 but it's not great for the knife to be banging uh, your knife blade against the cutting board. Um, also, like slicing on the cutting board. Wood cutting boards are better. Um, I have a couple. I probably could have pulled it out. It would have looked a lot fancier. Um, they're naturally uh, more resistant to bacteria and germs. Uh, wood seems more porous than plastic, but it's got some kind of natural anti, I won't say antibiotic, but uh, anti, uh, I'm not gonna say antibiotic. Oh, here's the, here's the, this is the one, this is, uh, Arclight. Arclight Cinemas, they have a cafe uh, here in LA, uh, Sherman Oaks Galleria. They, uh, <laughs> we took some hummus into the theater and they gave us the bowl. And I'm like, I'll bring it back. And they're like, don't bring it back. So I didn't bring it back. But now I have a bowl from Arclight um, that used to house delicious hummus, which they make in house, as far as I know, because it's a little different each time. So it's probably not commercial. So I did a really, really fine dice on that, and it's all over my fingers. So um, really fine dice, which is, you know, kind of what you see in the jarred stuff. Uh, let's pop the jarred stuff open. 
it's almost more pasty. It's also brown and it has calcium carbonate in it, right? Right? Garlic, soybean oil, olive oil, citric acid. That's what it is. Citric acid, which if I want citric acid, uh, I can add a little freshness uh, in the form of a lemon. So, so, say that a lot, don't I? I'm gonna go back and listen to this as I edit it. Do like, why did I say so all the time? And I'm on camera, so I can't just do a voiceover. It's like, what I was saying is made perfect sense. Um, that's bad ADR, bad lip reading. So this little guy is not gonna be able to see inside this bowl. So we're gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna realign the camera and uh, see if I can't get it high enough to look inside the bowl. Right back. I have no sink here. Wait, let's clap. Now I can sink them. Um, oh, I absolutely did not start a timer when I put these in. So, um, texture test. They are not ready. Alexa, set a timer for two and a half minutes. Two minutes and 30 seconds. Starting now. Oh, I said two. Thank you. Of course. So you always want to say... Good afternoon. <laughs> That's so polite. You always want to say thank you to the Alexas. Uh, you always want to say thank you. Um, <laughs> there it is again. <laughs> when the robot apocalypse happens, and I'm sure that it will, all the Terminator style, um, you're going to want to be the one who said thank you. That's all I'm saying. No judgment. Um, so here I'm gonna put in our tomatoes. We're going to, this is where we dump everything in the bowl and then we make a show of it. Artichoke hearts in, like Gordon Ramsay, except without something like a jerk all the time. Yeah, hey look, they're on the outside. Fancy. Olives. Olives. Olives in. You'll want to use all of them. <laughs> it hurt me more than it hurt you. Uh, we're going to do shallots. Panable shallots, remember? In. And then, and then, sneak in the garlic. because I don't really want to put everything in here super hot. So even when this is done in the next minute or two, I, I don't really want to put it in and melt feta. So I'm not going to put the feta in right now. All of this is going in there, but I'm going to uh, probably put some, I'm probably going to use a little red wine, red wine vinegar, star. I do a lot of star stuff. Way to show the label. I'm an actor. Uh, star. Star. This isn't product placement. It's just, I used to get everything at Trader Joe's and I haven't been there in a while. So, there's a pandemic on. Okay, these are almost ready. My internal timer is going to go off in a second. Let's ask. Alexa, how much longer? Alexa, how much longer? You have less than 10 seconds left for your <laughs> two minutes and 30 second time. The more I drink, the more accurate it is too. Alexa, stop. I'm not drunk. I'm not even drinking, I'm having coffee. So I'm just gonna pour all this water. Don't do that. Don't do that. I'm not saving the water either. I could totally save the water. I mean, there's lots of things we need to save. Save the whales. Save pasta water. Um, anytime you're cooking pasta, unless you're doing this exact dish, um, if you're doing long noodles, uh, farfalle, propadale, anything, um, save your water. Don't throw it out. Keep it boiling, in fact, because when you go to put things together, you make a sauce, you want that starchy water in the pan with the sauce, and it just makes everything come together. So, that's really hot.
Atente. Que bueno. That's my Italian. But I'm getting an order. Yeah, in a minute. I got an order. Bagel with schmear. Um, so this is how you cleanse your face. It opens up the pores and it's really nice. I recommend it with every pasta dish. So I'm gonna turn it. Let's get it all mixed up. I'm just gonna so. So, but what I want to do is I want to start adding some fun stuff. So, uh, while we let it cool down a bit, so we're gonna do uh, olive oil, the red wine vinegar. This is all to taste. So I'm going to probably do this, and then I'm going to taste it. Um, I'm also gonna use my handy dandy Le Creuset salt crock. It's a crock of salt. And then I'm just gonna do the fancy chef thing. Now the reason you do this up high is for distribution. Because if you just... If you just put something here, it only goes there. If you do it from up high, it falls everywhere. Now I may have oversalted this to prove a point, but at least I proved a point. Oh, and you really can't go wrong with cracked pepper. I keep it fairly thick. I think you can see inside the bowl. Let's get the bowl over. Hi, bowl. So, I'm gonna mess around with black pepper. I really like it. I think it adds heat and niceness. Niceties. So, okay, it's looking pretty good. It's still pretty hot. So I'm gonna go make a bagel with schmear and then I'm gonna put the feta in as soon as that's done. I'm gonna give it a little time to cool down. So, uh, and we're back. Uh, bagel with schmear is made. Uh, I forgot that I really wanted to add this. This is Italian parsley. Um, we happen to be growing a bunch on the back porch. So um, it's organic, sprayed with organic bug spray. I don't know what that means. So I discovered I'm going to have to do these videos uh, during the weekdays when they're uh, in school. See what I'm doing here? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'm doing the second nature without even describing what I'm doing. I'm roughly chopping it, and then I'm going in for the, like, lawnmower thing. Um, so then we can bring our bowl back, so we can sort of see inside. I'm going to take this, I'm just going to shove it in there. Now we're going to take our feta. And uh, no cross-contamination issues uh, because we're throwing this away. Washing it out, recycling it. I'm not throwing it away. You can maybe even use it for something else that's not feta and really mess with people. Oh, we still have feta. No, it's honest. So I'm just going to mix that up. So you get some green, you get some orange, you get some black, you get some... Uh, zing from the vinegar, which I think I might add a bit more of. Green things on my hand. It's parsley. So, okay. Um, taste test with clean spoon, even though it's all for the same family. It will be great. Cold, as the flavors all come together. But it's pretty good. I'm gonna add a little secret ingredient in. Also because I wanna make a joke about Whole Foods. <clears throat> Crushed red pepper. Crushed red pepper, right there. Oop. To me it's backwards. Let's do it here. The size of the pepper itself is larger than the holes in the top. So you have to open up the heavy pour and just give it a little love. So there you go. And that's going to be it. This is how you make an orzo pasta salad. 
in only like uh, 20 minutes. So I will edit this down and leave in the funny bits that are informative and uh, cut the rest out. That's what the two cameras thing is for. It's great. So now I got the whole family talking in the background. So I'm going to go. Toodles.